My name is the Primogen, and I've been using Vim for about 10 years, and I wanted to take the time to build a series in which could lead you from someone who doesn't know anything about Vim to someone who could become an expert at using Vim. Now, this is going to be a multi-part series in which each one's going to add to the next one, and it will get you progressively faster as you go. And I do want to make a separation right away. There is Vim, the program, and Vim, the motions. Now, Vim motions, I don't understand why anyone who is programming does not use those. Those are extremely efficient, and they're very well done, and they're available in IntelliJ, Sublime, even Atom, VS Code, anything you want to use, they have them. But Vim, the editor, I understand why that may not be as appealing. You have to kind of want to be able to configure and create your own environment to exactly your own needs for Vim to be super useful. And so this a few part series is going to be focused on making you awesome at Vim motions and navigating some things within Vim. I'll try to separate them out. So if you're just not interested in Vim itself, that's okay. But if you are interested more in using Vim, I have a video on your Vim RC, which you can go check out right now. Links down in the description. And as you pass by that like button, give it like a little bit of coconut oil. Appreciate it. All right, so right away, I do not think that you should start out in Vim if you have no familiarity with Vim. I really do think you should continue to use VS Code if that's what you're using, IntelliJ if that's what you're using, whatever editor you're currently using, use the Vim mode or the Vim plugin. Now, I think one of the big mistakes when learning Vim is that you try to learn every single key possible, all the different shortcuts, and then you're just sit sitting there just like mentally grinding to try to find the most optimal one in every single moment that sounds exhausting so that's why I just took a much different approach myself to learning it and I'm gonna try to give you that exact same approach that I took 10 years ago all right so one last kind of preface this will be the hardest of all the videos because the getting started is the hardest because you're going from a paradigm of using the mouse and being much more kind of click and control oriented into using something like vim which is just much more home row motion centric now I know that a lot of you are probably Probably using VS Code. I hear if you hit the subscribe button right now, it actually makes learning easier. Go check the comments. People will say that. Trust me, it makes it easier. All right, so the first thing you need to know about Vim is that it's a modal editor. Whether you're using it in VS Code or Vim itself, you are in various modes. And there's four modes that you really need to be concerned about. First off, the mode that you're in right away is normal mode. It just means that I can move my cursor around. Second mode is insert mode. You can see it right down here, says insert. That just means I can type like a regular editor, hit all the enters, do everything that it will. It'll try to auto indent and do the best job it can. Third is visual mode. You can see right down here again, I'm in visual line mode. As I move, it's kind of like highlighting with your cursor. And of course, the fourth mode is command mode. If I press colon, you'll notice right here that a colon appears and my cursor actually appears on this line. I can now type out some commands. A command you should know is W, colon W, enter, will save the current file. Colon WQ will attempt to quit. Now, I know I ruined all the memes, but guess what? The memes are still funny. I actually still like them. 10 years later, I still enjoy can't quit Vim memes. All right, so let's go over each of the modes in detail. All right, so normal mode, the mode you can move your cursor around. The most foundational movements you need to know is J and K. K will obviously go upwards. J will go downwards. I have my keystrokes right here so you can watch them happen. L is going to go this way and H is going to go this way. Now, these are the most fundamental movements. I do recommend getting pretty dang good with them. Now, if you have NeoVim, I actually built the game for this exact thing. So if you do command mode, Vim, be good, you will get a game. If you navigate down with your J's all the way down to H, J, K, and L, press D, D to delete that line. It will start a game for you where you can actually walk around to each one of these and then press X to delete it. X on the X. And this right here will just help you get good and just kind of build that muscle memory in super quick without making it feel so boring as trying to use the text editing program. But instead you got a little quick game really just helps you make that connection with those keys. If you don't know how to do a plugin, again, I have that VimRC video, which I have linked down below. But you'll quickly realize that H, J, K, and L is just not enough, right? That H and L is really inconvenient. You just like hold it and slowly go over. That would just melt my mind. Now, I told you Vim is fast. It is smooth. It blows people away when you see someone who is really good at it use it. So obviously L can L and H can't be the last of your movements. So the last two I really wanted to show you was W, which hops over by word, something equivalent of like holding option I think on Mac and pressing the arrow key, and B, the opposite, walks backwards. So those movements are called motion. A motion is anything that moves the cursor. All right, so I wanted to go over the anatomy of a motion. So right now, all we've been focusing on is this part right here. 
H-J-K-L-W-B, those are motions. They move the cursor. But did you know that you can kind of augment them? Meaning that if we add a count to it, it'll be performed multiple times. So check this out. So you can see about eight lines up, there is a to-do line right up there, which if I press 8K, I will jump my cursor eight times up to that to-do line. If I wanted to go back, say, all the way down to the return statement, 16 lines down, I can go 16J. You can see right here I did 16J, and my cursor landed on the return statement right there. Yes, you're probably impressed with my Vanna White level pointing skills. I know. You can't train it. You're born with it. Again, if you have Vim, be good. Uh, I did do another one of these games right down here. So if you go all the way down to relative, you turn on relative line numbers inside your VimRC. You can do, you know, six down. And you can just practice the deleting game so that you can get good at jumping around while deleting. Relative line numbers have helped me an enormous amount. So I highly recommend you getting used to jumping around with relative line numbers. Obviously, counts work with all the other motions. So I can technically go like 10L but that'd be weird, or 2B. Also, that would be weird. I, that sounds like way too much overhead to try to count how many jumps you have. I would not use that as a way to move around in Vim. All right, so let's add a little bit more. Let's talk about commands you can do. I want to focus right now just on the D command. D stands for delete, meaning that if I wanted to delete a line, I can press DD. That will just simply delete a singular line. I press U to undo that delete. I can press Control R to redo my previous action. So U is like Control Z, Control R is like Control Y. Ds can be used with motion. Just like I said, we can do a command, a count, and a motion. So jumping back here, if I'm on this line right here and I want to delete all the way down to the return statement, but not the return statement, what I can do is I can go D3J. I have deleted my current line plus three down below me. That means I can also go delete word. That's how you would delete a single word. Delete to word. You could delete two words if you really want to. Again, I don't do the whole two with words or back or any of those. That means you can do DB and delete backwards. So D is a command you can mix with a motion. Hopefully you're starting to understand and you're happy that I kind of went over the anatomy of a motion because this should start making sense. Okay, I can move the cursor and I can delete move the cursor. All right, so let's talk about insert mode. Now, first off, I want you to look at where my cursor is right up here. Now, this cursor, of course, is fat. It has, you know, it covers an entire character. It's just something I've gotten used to. Uh, some people, when they go into insert mode, their cursors can become thin. I never like that. So don't be taken back by this as you watch me go. But if I press I, I go on the left side of my cursor for insert mode. So as you can see, I pressed I to go into insert mode, and then I just started typing, and boom. These characters come here. Now we can leave insert mode by pressing escape. You can also press control C and you can also press control open bracket. Control open bracket and escape are the same. Control C does have some minor variations to it, mostly in visual block mode that cause some weirdness to it. So you got to know which one you like. All right, so you can press U to undo, of course. Now, if I press A, you'll notice that it moves my cursor, but I'm in insert mode. So now as I type, I'm on the other side of the zero. Now you're thinking, okay, when would you actually, do you actually ever need that? You'd be surprised at how often pressing A to move forward, like how often you actually use that. A and I become something that you should just use all the time. It's very, very surprising. So I'm gonna leave insert mode, undo it, there we go. There's a bunch of other ways to enter into insert mode, but I think you should really just get used to that. Right now, we're about few options. Even if it's inconvenient, you need to learn the basics and move fast. All right, so let's move on to the last part, visual mode. So this one, I'm actually gonna show you how to use yank and paste in visual mode. So visual mode has two primary ways you're gonna use it. If you press V, you'll go into visual mode down here. That means I can use any of the motions that I've learned so far. So I can press W and you'll notice that it's like highlighting as it's, go as it's going. This is effectively like using your mouse and dragging it and highlighting a region. At this point, I could copy and paste. So normally you'd press probably Control C or Command C if you're on one of those fills, drink, and coffee max. But in Vim, you just press Y. Y yanks it. Now if I press P, I will paste it. As you can see, I paste it. Now notice something, it's not giving me a new line. It's pasting the exact contents of what I yanked. So let's undo it with U, undo, undo, undo. And this time let's use Shift V. We'll go into visual line mode. Now when I yank this, if I paste it, I actually get that new line at the end. A little bit more convenient, so you kinda gotta know which one you want to do. Let's do a little bit of comboing. So what I can do is I can actually highlight, I can yank it, I can jump down here and I can highlight this and I can paste it. So you can paste over a highlighted region. 
but I'm going to show you something that's a little bit weird. What do you think happens if I press P now? Well, I get the last thing I deleted. So that means if you press DD and delete a line and you press P, you actually paste the last thing you deleted. So yanking and deleting goes to the same buffer. And again, if you highlight a bunch of stuff and you paste it, you'll delete all of that and then paste over it with the contents you have in your paste buffer. And now when I press P, I get all the previous things I deleted. And of course you can use yanking just by itself. So I can press Y, Y. You don't have to highlight first to use yanking. Now, if you remember the anatomy of a motion, I did show you that you can do a command, a count, and the motion. So I can do yank, say five, and down. I just yanked all the way to this offset line right here. So now when I press P, you'll notice I got those five lines and I was able to paste them all, which means I can also do the exact same thing with D, D, five, J, and now I can paste the things that I just got done deleting down below. Now, I really wanted to stress this and I wanted to make sure you had the time to hear me on this one, which is this is going to be the hardest of all the lessons. If you are new to Vim, this is the hardest part. Learning how to do HJ, K, and L, learning how to do relative jumps, kind of getting your feet wet with that VimRC, which is still linked down below. Like, it's just a lot of information. It is very difficult. So if you're using VS Code, don't feel bad. Just keep using VS Code. That's what I did. When I was going to use Vim as my editor, I actually started off by using IdeaVim, the IntelliJ plugin. And I used that for years. I got really good at the motions and then moved over. So once you feel like you've really mastered these motions and they don't feel hard for you to think about, they feel very second nature, you got to move on to the next part of this series. I don't know how many videos this series is going to be, somewhere between three to five, but I am hoping to give you a very detailed way to make Vim as your editor. And mostly I just hope that you feel encouraged because you know what, when I use Vim as my editor, it almost feels like a game because I have all these combos that I'm doing. I can move really, really fast and I have the ability to do a lot without having to think too much. I really do like the idea of making everything second nature to the point where you don't think about editing the text. You just edit it really fast. And that's the coconut oil goodness that I'm trying to give you, okay? If you wanna be smooth and sliding around, you just gotta master the fundamentals, okay? Practice for a week and come back for part two. The name is the Primogen.